it's funny for me to tell people to go to the woods for seven days, sit in silence, and you'll guess what? You'll find out who you are. And it's not who you think you are. When I was a raver, you know, I would run into guys that were probably late 30s, early 40s, much like myself, energetic, older dudes, big beards and stuff, you know, probably the guys that were making the ass and stuff. And occasionally I would just be sitting, you know, really rushing hard, and they'd sit down and just start rapping with me, you know, and you're like seeing through them and shit, and, but I remember some of those conversations where they were like, you like where you're at, huh? You're comfortable there. And I'm like, yeah, I feel fine. It's good. And he's like, that's good, you know? I remember this one guy in particular at a rave at an old Home Depot that was abandoned <laughs> in Oakland. And he was like, you know, if you learn how to meditate, you can go to the place that you're at right now and you can control it. And it lasts a lot longer and you don't feel like shit the next day, you know? And it's really the next step. If you really think that this is something that works for you, that you're okay, you know? And I'd just be like, yeah, all right, meditation, yeah, I've been reading about that. I've been reading some Buddhist books, man. That's cool, but uh, yeah, I'm just tripping, man. I'm having a good time, you know? Just whatever, just being really out there. But I remember those conversations, you know? And those really set a tone, and sure enough, now I'm that guy right. that wants to turn people on to LSD, get them to see that door, right. open that door for themselves and see what's on the other side, and then uh, come back to me. Hear them both? Shit's so tight. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a time when I was taking a lot of LSD every Sunday pretty much for a year or two and I would take it by myself about noon walk all the way across San Francisco to the beach stay there really let it come on at the ocean you know sitting in the sand and then I would go troop through the woods like a little tripper wood or a big you know white boy tripper with this hood on and sweating and looking all sketchy you know <laughs> that's the reality I suppose <laughs> but but yeah and I think that that um yeah, there's there's things that again, like you're saying, you learn in that space, and that those those situations have, you know, teaching potential. But it's hard to articulate it. You get it. You get it in your heart. Right. You know, you get it in a place that isn't the thinker so much. You just you understand that you're connected to everything that's around you. So, as I sit in meditation, in vipassana practice, where I'm coming back to my breath as the object of concentration over and over, right? Any thought that arises, I let it go. So you start to see that you can let it all go. That it's just thinking, it just comes and goes, right? You develop then this observational standpoint where you can see that. So then in regular life, as you start to find yourself thinking about something that's not helpful in the moment, or something fucked up that happened in the past, or something that's going to put you into depression, you go, oh wait, that's not necessary. Again, I'm getting really weird and vague, but that's that's what happens. Like, I recognize what an opportunity this is. As soon as you get really in the present moment, you can't help but feel like, holy shit, this is all happening at once. Everything is happening at once. Over and over and over and over and over. Like, constantly. Everything's connected to everything. And that's the hard stuff to think about. But when you feel it, it's like, yes. I think Jesus was teaching how to be a Christ. Not to be a Christian, not at all. He actually talked down a lot and gave his disciples a lot of shit for thinking like that, you know? And, and the Buddha was the same, for sure. Find the Buddha within, you know? Don't be a Buddhist. All right, so I'll just give you the basic instruction. This is kind of I give people generically. Um, first thing is, if you can, find a place that's quiet, um, you know, like the room I'm in now. Uh, get it, all your distractions away. If you can, you know, turn off your phone if you can, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just get rid of the distractions as much as possible. Upright back is really 
helpful if you're going to sit for 40 minutes in stillness. You need to find that balance for your spine. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of back pain. So over time, meditation practice has taught me where that balance point is for my back. And I can just sit now. You know what I mean? But, you know, get to know your body too. Everything. Shoulders, you know, head and neck, but not like, you know, like that. Like keep it, find that balance point. And then close your eyes. Um, hands, whatever. I kind of put them in my lap like this to kind of make me feel like I'm really doing something. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, just breathe. Breathe through your nose. Breathe naturally. Uh, don't force the breath at all. So I just concentrate on the, the air going in and out of my nose, right there. And again, don't force it. And if I notice that I'm thinking about something, like I just noticed I was thinking about what to say next. <laughs> um, just note it, whatever it is, and uh, really in a non-judgmental way, try to come back to concentration on your breath. If you hear yourself saying, God, I'm terrible at this, I keep thinking, just smile. That's, that's the game, you know? and come back to your breath. And really try to get to know the breath. I know that sounds corny, but notice that it has a beginning and an ending. Notice how every breath is different. And in that way, you'll kind of get to know the body too. And remember to keep your stomach loose. And if it's easier to concentrate on your breath there, the rise and fall of your diaphragm, your stomach, then go ahead and concentrate on your breath there versus here at the nose. Really, it doesn't matter, as long as you're just kind of coming back into concentration with your breath. Eventually, you want to let go of the concentration on your breath as well, and just be. Not thinking. Just being, existing, feeling, and then as thoughts arise again, back to the breath. Also, uh, opening the eyes is fine, as long as you're not looking, you're just seeing. So, I'll stare at a place on the floor, so to speak, about four feet in front of me, and I'll either concentrate on the smallest, smallest little thing or I'll try to just let my perception open wide so that I almost try to see the space between me and the object on the floor. And that can lead to some pretty heavy peripheral or uh, I don't know, like metaphysical experiences because your perspective visually will really start to change. Same thing with sound. When in meditation, if you notice sound, again, you can just note it. A car horn, an airplane, a fart, a, a bell, a phone ringing. Just note it as a sound and come back to your breath. And try to practice hearing without listening. So hear all sounds as one sound. And again, that'll help open up consciousness.